Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Hope you guys are all doing well today. I am going to just hang out here a little bit and wait for some of you to join me. It's been quite a few days and I apologize. We've had some situations here that have kept me from filming. So between our solar giving us some struggles and my equipment freezing and giving me struggles for the last five days, finally got that sorted out. So I'm back and uh, I missed you guys. I hope you missed this too. So um Grab your favorite beverage and join me because we got some catching up to do. When you guys join me also, let me know where you're from and uh, what you are trying to accomplish with your preparedness goals and also what you're thankful for. It's been a couple days, so I wanted to share with you um, what we're doing here. This is the November 30-Day Gratefully Prepared Challenge. I feel that when we are more grateful in life and see the benefits and blessings around us that our lives are more joyful, more happy, we're more blessed, uh, just have a different outlook. And in doing so, that also enables you to, I feel, just absorb the rest of the world better. You learn better. So that's why I'm kind of Jimmy in the two and doubling the two up. So. What I want you to do if you are just joining in is go to treyerwilderness.com slash G P and you can find out all the details. But we are doing a giveaway at the end of the month for those that have been the most active and interactive with me and um, that have contributed because this is not to be a one-sided deal. I am sharing the videos and my thoughts, but I want your input as well. So feel free to chat. You can do that while I'm live. If you're watching this after the fact, I'd still love to get your input um, and information. So definitely share with me every day what you are grateful for. Um, I just want to give a little shout out to Daniel, who has been leaving such amazing um comments as to what he's grateful for and uh, there are a lot of people that have been interacting and sharing their their input both here and on YouTube so I am gratefully thankful for you guys because that interaction um, also helps others we all do things different we all struggle different we all have different um, opinions on different things and that just helps us all to grow and learn so definitely dive in and share with me like I said, we have a lot to cover today. Um, we, I have not done this since last Friday because our power was giving us trouble. So we were actually shutting our house down. Um, and, and my laptop froze. My iPhone was full and I couldn't do anything about it because I couldn't act, connect the two together. So it's been rather interesting. Um, so nevertheless, it's been really busy here. Um, I believe last time I spoke with you guys, I was doing sauerkraut and working with the mason tops. Um, there's lots of um, links in today's description, both here and on YouTube. So check them out. Um, I did not put mason tops in there, but if you want to look them up, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash mason tops. I have actually fermented kimchi, um, my cranberry chutney, and the sauerkraut so far. And I've got a bunch of other things I would like to ferment as well. But the cranberry sauce is one of my favorites. Anything cranberry and anything pumpkin is uh, top of the list for me this time of year. So I shared the recipe with you. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash cranberry if you want to. You still have time. It just needs like two days fermenting time and then you can put it in the fridge. So you have time to make it for Thanksgiving. So you can check that out. But I am thankful for so many things. I mean, I could just, the list could just go on and on and on and on. I, I have so many things to be thankful for, but I actually made some notes today uh, that I just want to make sure I cover things because I've got a lot to cover since I've got a bunch of days to catch up on. I can see a bunch of you joining me. Share with me where you're from and uh, what you're grateful for today while I'm looking this up here. Um, we have had some really cool things going on despite um, the chaos, and we always have chaos mixed with crazy, mixed with amazing miracles and blessings. So every day is good. It's just interesting. Um, but I am really thankful for time spent with my husband. I got out with him Saturday. We were hunting and just enjoying the day. And I know I mentioned him earlier in this, but I, I, without him, everything would be so different. He is just my rock and such a very vibrant part of my life. I love time to be able to laugh with him and just enjoy our time alone. Um, 
and this time of year is just a time that we get a chance to get out and do things together. He's also started trapping, which uh, is another fun thing that we both enjoy doing together. So we've been getting a lot of time doing that. And I know that there are people, I mentioned it earlier in one of the other shows, that you know, hunting and trapping make a lot of people uh, curdle and have not so nice things to say. But it is a means of a traditional lifestyle, both for our food as well as um, clothing, uh, tools, all kinds of things. Hey, Michelle. <sighs> she is grateful for good friends and a warm fire. Amen, sister. Me too. And But with the meats and the, and the trapping, you know, people think that just trapping, you're killing an animal for its hide and for money, but that's not true. We were blessed with a beaver this morning, and that is going to be shared with friends on Sunday. Beaver meat is really amazing. It is very similar um, in taste uh, to that of pork, and it is just an amazing rich meat. And the mountain boy was like extremely excited because that is something that he really enjoys having. Beaver back straps with uh, barbecue sauce are just amazing. And beaver, although they are beautiful, just like any animal, they can be very destructive. Uh, they can fell of extremely large trees um, and just make a mess of things and also cause a lot of water um, issues for flooding because of their dams and so forth. So... Uh, a lot of people don't know about the beaver meat, Michelle. And the other thing is, too, tonight's dinner here is an elk. Actually, it's a mule deer neck roast. A lot of times when people are hunting, the neck is not something that they um, retrieve and take with them. And we get usually like two to three neck roasts out of a deer and good grief out of my elk. I think we got six. So those neck roasts are wonderful. Um, you want to take the marrow out of the bones. Well, actually, I believe it's the marrow. It's a, the, white, the big white strip that's going up through. I'm not sure if it's the one through the backbone now or the one along it. But nevertheless, um, if you get rid of that and just boil up the uh, neck itself, it would definitely be the marrow. It's the marrow that's causing it. Um, sorry, I'm battling with myself here. But anyway, um, the marrow gives it a little bit of a gamey taste. If you get rid of the marrow, you still have the bones, and the bones can make still a, an amazing broth. But the neck roast has really good meat on it, and that meat will just fall off, and you can make an amazing soup or meal with that. We typically just use it like a roast. And um, I had made one a couple nights ago, and there was still quite a bit of meat on it. They, they really do have a lot of meat. So I'm going to cook the bones down today, and I'm making the guys a really nice soup. And I am making a flatbread um, to go along with that, which I'm going to share the recipe with you as well. So, you know, there's a lot to be gained in hunting and trapping. You know, we use the hides in all the things that we do here. Um, and we utilize everything we can from the animal. So there's not a whole lot that gets wasted. And um, it's a me it is a means of income for us. Uh, initially, our first six years here, you know, we were trying to maintain an income from our homestead and our homestead alone. Had I not gotten sick last year, that would be the case. But we've had to work outside of the home this year to get back on our feet due to the excessive uh, medical bills that I incurred. So... Uh, that's where Treyer Construction came from. Uh, so, you know, you just kind of roll with things, but those are things that I wanted to point out, that there is other meat available to you besides, you know, what you're commonly accustomed to. And it actually is really, really good. Uh, uh, same with the neck roast. That neck meat is just so amazing, and most people um, just discard it. So keep that in mind when you're out there hunting. Now, I am also really thankful for my mountain boy and the time we get to share. And I know I mentioned that before, too. But I'm thankful for that time spent, like the quality time. We've been really busy um, racing around. But we still take time each day to, you know, play games and during the week to maybe watch a movie. So I wanted to mention a couple things. You know, most people sit at night in front of the TV. They're glued to their machines. And we don't have a TV. We do watch Netflix on occasion or Amazon on occasion, but we focus more on Pure Flix. You may not have heard of them, but it is a Christian-based uh, video um, program or facility just like Netflix. And the nice thing with it is you don't have to preview the movie first to make sure it's, it's quality content. 
you know, before you're sitting there and all the F-bombs are flying and everything else or there's really bad scenes that you'd prefer your children not to be watching, you know. So I really like it, too, because of the wholesomeness and the things that, you know, sometimes you just need that inspirational lift. But it's not just all inspirational things. There's some really good, um, as the Mountain Boy would say, an action-packed thriller are his favorite. And the, it's a really very broad mix of materials. So there's stuff there for little kids and adults. It's just, it's great. So you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash pureflix and the description is, is, or the link is in the description below. The other thing is games. You know, not too many people get involved in playing games, but that's how I grew up was always, you know, board games, card games, rummy, you know, I mean, we were outside a lot too, but when we were forced to be inside, that's when the games would come out and we'd have, you know... I'm sure many of you out there, I can see Michelle doing this, having a Monopoly fest where you'd play Monopoly till all crazy hours because it, it's a never-ending game. But those board games are great things to do with your kids. And there's a couple links down below that I wanted to mention, just some of our favorites. There's something called Settlers of Catan, which is a great um, kind of a preparedness-leveled game. Um, we find those games in the Amish stores back in Pennsylvania. But you can also find them online. So you can find the link below for treyerwilderness.com slash settlers. And there's varying uh, games, and you can connect the games. Uh, so there's um, the, the Settlers of Catan is where you settle on land, and you have to gain your resources. So it's, it's just a neat game, and I encourage you to check them out. Also, we play Skippo, and we play... Um, phase 10, we play Farkle, which is a dice game, and we play Othello, which is a really great mind game. Ah! Michelle says, you'd be surprised to know she doesn't like Monopoly. I don't like it either because it takes forever, but as a kid, I enjoyed it. But And also Life was another one I really enjoyed. But I <laughs> we have Dogopoly now, and that's almost even worse. But I play it with the guy anyway, just because he enjoys it. So, <laughs> but... Anyway, there's so many different types of games that you could do with your kids, and I encourage that because when you're sitting playing games with your children, it's quality time, it's interaction, it's not just watching a movie. And, you know, I enjoy watching a movie. Sometimes it's just great to be mindless and just to stare at a screen uh, other than one that I'm working on. You know, I enjoy that. It, it just gives me a good uh, letdown, a good release of stress, whatever you want to call it. But it's also something I don't want to do every time I have a chance to do something with him. So we just actually came back from a walk, and it was wonderful. So I want to encourage you guys, too, to get out there and do your walking like I had on the first day. Because activity is really good for the mind and really good to rejuvenate your soul as well. So, And that good quiet time. Of course, walking four dogs with the mountain boy is never quiet, but it was very enjoyable. <laughs> so... The other thing that I am very grateful for is our friends. We are blessed with such amazing people in our lives. And, you know, everybody has those situations where the unusual person comes into your life and they, they play weird games, you know, like what went on in high school. And you're always going to have those people interacting in your life. But when you have what I feel is a true friend, somebody that always has your back, Somebody that's always looking out for you. Somebody that you can always count on and will never throw you under the bus. And, and you know, that person that would give their life for you. I mean, I have friends like that. And I feel so incredibly blessed. And those people I hang on tight to and and just feel so treasured. Michelle happens to be one of those. <laughs> and it's just a great thing when you, you have those people in your life that help you to be grateful because of their interaction in your life and, and just uh, the growth that your friendships take on. So I encourage you to hang on tight to those friends and to be mindful and grateful for them as well because they don't come all the time. I can honestly say that on two, three hands are the number of solid, true friends that I really, really have. So keep that in mind and, and let them know how much they mean to you. Uh, we were blessed to have a friend come out on Sunday and join us for dinner, and it was just really a treasure. The other thing is that I, I am just so thankful for God's grace and his mercies and blessings in our lives. You know, like I said earlier, every, you know, everything goes upside down and it happens, you know, I'm sure just like for you frequently, you know, in the midst of your good stuff, you got chaos. 
But he just always shines through in our lives, and I'm grateful for technology and it working today that I can do this with you guys. So be grateful, be thankful, and pay attention to your blessings and join in with me. Um, your interaction um, is really helpful in helping others as well. So I want to share a little bit with you on what preparedness means to me. But before I do that, now I don't know how many of you are out there, so if you're watching this after the fact, please share this with me. What exactly does preparedness mean to you? You know, for you and your family, when you hear preparedness, what do you think of? For me, preparedness is something that when I look around my homestead, I look at every aspect of our life and I look at what we need and um, what we need to adjust, what we need to um, have and the, the things that we need to do manually, you know, our labor involved, but what, what do we need to keep our place running successfully all the time, no matter what. So not just in my kitchen and um, not just, um, you know, say fuel for our generator, but we've got animals, we've got a garden, um, we ha live in a location that gets a great amount of so snow in the wintertime, we get a lot of rain in the summertime or in spring and fall. So you know, those things all cause situations for us. You know, we're in a windy area surrounded by, you know, occasionally the winds come in and we're surrounded by tall timber. So, you know, you analyze the equipment you need, the materials you need, um, the uh, supplies, uh, the knowledge, the skills, the know-how, and how do you how do you prepare for everything all at once? And you can't, but what you can do is make a daily effort to constantly be aware of your needs and, and how you'll do things and um, what's required. And like this all goes back to in the very beginning, for those of you that are new that are joining, if you subscribe to our newsletter, you will receive our... Um, preparedness worksheets and I talked in the beginning about how to sit down and make lists of things and that's and that's basically what we've done is we've gone from area to area on our homestead in our home um, and really analyzed our lives and have come up with lists and things that we needed you know to keep our homestead running very smoothly very efficiently and um, you know, some things that you may need to attain aren't things that you need to constantly stock up on, like certain tools, but then there's other things that you need to constantly, um, stock up on, you know, and, and, and making sure that you don't allow yourself to run out of those things. So it's just making that conscious effort every day to make sure that I'm taking care of my house, my home, my, my family, my animals. And, and that we are able to do what we need to do efficiently and successfully. And, you know, it's kind of double-fold, you know, with, I, I talk a lot about feeding my family. But if I feed my family well, our health is also included in that. And um, so it's, there's a lot of areas that can be double-fold. My animals, I feed, but they produce things for me on my homestead. Um, we don't have anything other than chickens right now, so our chickens are providing eggs, on occasion meat, but um, we did have uh, milk goats, so you know those those goats, although we fed, they provided a, a incredibly wonderful, creamy, good tasting milk that we made ice cream and um, yogurt and uh, sour cream and uh, all kinds of things with. And the same with the eggs. I can make my mayonnaise, you know. So having the additional resources on your homestead um, also ends up providing for you. So when you look at all the things that you, you need to uh, be prepared for, it starts to become a mindset that you don't really have to think much about because it just becomes a routine once you get into that full mindset. And 
I'm sure you guys can say the same. Maybe some of you have already said this, but when we embrace this journey here to Idaho, you know, we mentioned to people that we wanted to be more prepared. And the comment that was made to me is prepared for what? And that was seven years ago. And, you know, many people walk around and don't really see some of the things that are going on in our world today. But there's a lot going on and there's a lot of reason to focus heavily on your preparedness whether it's, you know, like I've talked about before, being ready for the emergencies, the storms, but on a daily basis, being prepared for your future is what we would really like to see everybody embrace. And my question to you is also, what are some of the struggles you have when you um, think about wanting to embrace a preparedness lifestyle? Because that kind of falls into the same category. What do you think of when you think of being prepared? You know, there's a lot of stuff on TV, you know, that caused the, you know, the fear mongering and, and that and, and, and the, um, the news and the media can really put a lot of fear in you. But um, I, I had the blessing today to interview Joel Salatin. Uh, he is from Poly, uh, polyfacefarms.com and is an author and is an amazing uh, person that is running and, and pushing to keep our food and our farms in this country. And he said something so brilliant today in regard to fear. You know, so many people are fearful and afraid to embrace things. Um, they're afraid they're going to be, you know, do something wrong. They're afraid to just take that step and learn to do things. And I've said it before too, that, you know, the best parts of life are on the other side of our comfort zone, you know, that we have to get past that fear. And honestly, in my opinion, living in, in, um, let me think how I want to word this. Um, when you're pushing through your comfort zone, it's a scary place to be, but it's an awesome place to be because it's you're you're pushing yourself to places you've never gone, but you're then experiencing some of the most amazing things you've never experienced. So it's double fold, you know. Once you start pushing yourself out of those fears, you're gonna find it's very exciting and and really amazing. And the thing is, too, when you climb out from behind those fears and you start um, embracing some of these things, even though you make mistakes, because you're going to, and that's part of learning, and that's what's going to take you to the different levels. Because it, Thomas Edison made so many mistakes. But it's what brought him and kept pushing him forward to be a success. And it's just like anybody else that is successful and that has overcome is that they just kept pushing and persevering. And that's what we need to do. So if you are fearful and, and uncertain um, to learn new skills and you're afraid of making mistakes, I want to encourage you today to dive into something whether it's um, making a meal for your family, um, whether it's learning how to can, whether it's learning how to hunt, whatever it is, whatever you're hung up on, I encourage you to step out of that zone into a scarier zone that's going to exhilarate and just be a, an amazing place for you to start your journey forward. I want to encourage you to do that because so many people just get so stuck in concrete because of their fears and and we've all gone through life where someone has caused us to doubt ourselves and you really need to push past that and I want to encourage you to do that today hi Chad glad to see you join me now I want to show you haha -ha. hey we're back it was spinning and spinning so I've relocated <laughs> it's like poof I'm there right okay I want to share a bunch of things with you today um, this was one of my latest finds at a antique type thrift store. This is a cast iron uh, saucepan, if you will. And 
it has a nice little lid to go with it. I was just so thoroughly thrilled to find that and I got it for, well, I think it was $19. So that in itself is a find. I've never seen any in that shape before and it's flawless. So I was really excited. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is just some of my dinner. These are the green beans and my okra and tomatoes that I canned this year. So don't be afraid to can. There's so many good things that you can put in your kitchen. Now I'm going to swing around behind my... Actually, I'm going to spin you guys around. Da, da, da. Okay, yes, you can see my wash in front of the wood stove there. Here is my cranberry chutney, which oh, tastes so good. I love cranberry. And anything pumpkin. That's what I'm going to share with you in a little bit. Here is my sauerkraut that is fermenting. And, and these are the mason tops. There is a little... Um, <laughs> excuse me, a pickle pebble in the inside. I just love their names for things. Um, now this is my kimchi, which is going nuts in this jar. Um, I can't wait to try this. And I will be sharing recipes for those things. The, the cranberry one is on our website. So you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash cranberry and you can make that before Thanksgiving. I will be making um, my bread and there'll be a recipe on the website. I provided a link below. It is simple-healthy-flatbread- dash. I think it's just dash bread. Anyway, it's in the, the links below if my mind's not cooperating. But it's just simple. It's flour and I made this the other night so there's my pumpkin and eggs in this case. Um, but if you're making it from standard flour the flatbread recipe is really easy. It is just a cup of flour, whether it's gluten-free flour, um, ancient flours like your einkorn, or uh, regular wheat flour. A cup of that, cup of the pumpkin, and just a pinch of salt. And you just mix those together well. If it's a little too wet, you want to um, add some more flour in there. And you can either roll it or flatten it. I put it in balls and then I uh, press it down on the counter for myself rather than uh, rolling it. And I have a coconut flour recipe for the same thing. Um, coconut flour is very different than regular flour. So when you're using a regular cup of wheat flour, you would only use a third of a cup of coconut flour. So... Um, in addition to that, you also need to add two eggs when you're using coconut flour because of the moisture that's necessary because it just it absorbs all the moisture. And then you also put your cup of coconut flour in and your pinch of salt in there and do the same. You just blend it real good that it's like a dough and flatten it out. And what you do, what I've been doing is just using coconut oil in my cast iron skillet and throwing them in there on the one side, letting them in there for a little bit and then flipping it over and flatbread is really good when it's warm so I'm gonna make it now but I'm gonna heat it later for the guys when they're when we're making dinner but it's so so easy to make and if you click on the link in the description below it is not active right now because I'm going to put that uh, live a little later today so you guys just got the recipe but I will have that live uh, a little later today and then you can print out the recipe and add it to your archives if you want to but it's such a simple recipe and it's so good and I like using the coconut flowers or the almond flowers for one because I can have it. I am on a paleo and a ketogenic um, diet, so I can't have grains. So coconut flour is uh, a protein and so is almond flour. So um, you can do the substitutions there. Um, I did not include an almond substitution, but the coconut one I just have. And it's just it's just so nice. With the pumpkin, too, um, I really like adding the coconut flour because it makes it a little sweeter. And if you wanted to, there's no reason why you couldn't do a little bit of cinnamon and, and organic raw sugar on top of the flatbread to turn it into something sweet instead of just uh, something for your, your meals. So keep that in mind. But I wanted to share that with you. It's just quick. It's easy. So if you need something to step out of your comfort zone, there you go. You won't get any easier than that. And, and just watch while you um, have it in your pan. Just uh, use your spatula or your flipper and get under there and just make sure that it's not getting too dark. You just want it nice and brown and then you can flip it and, and once it's browned on the other side, you're good to go. Um, I also wanted to share with you 
think I mentioned it before, but I thought I would show you the magazine. Um, you can find my article on page 118 of the new Pioneer magazine that is currently on the shelves. This is a great magazine. It's a little pricier because they only do quarterly issues, but the information that's in these magazines is really, really good. This is a great um, magazine to have if you're learning to homestead or to be prepared. Um, lots of great tips and, and things in here. So I encourage that. Not just because I write for them. We we got that magazine before I started writing, and it was quite the blessing to be included in that magazine. Now, something else I wanted to um, mention to you as well is um, learning to do new crafts and different things. Uh, bear with me. My kettle's going to take off here. There we go. I was heating some water. Um, learning to do new crafts is a fun thing to do, and I had some wonderful um, yarn given to me. It is a Pygora and a Merino wool and it is from my dear friend Janet over at Timber Creek Farms and there is a link below um, to find her yarn and um, there's also a link below uh, for Knit Picks which is a great place to get your knitting needles but I am going to be making either fingerless gloves with this um, or I'm going to be making um, and I might make both. It depends. I have 200 yards here, so I have to figure it out when I'm done um, on the video here. But either fingerless gloves or I was, I'm wanting, I keep running out of hair scrunchies and it's hard to find good quality hair scrunchies anymore. And I know you guys out there are probably like, whatever, but I'm going to make me some of those. Um, and I wanted to knit them. And I, I really love um, knitted and crocheted looking things. And I just thought that would be really fitting. So Janet, thank you for this wonderful wool. And the link, like I said, is down below that you can um, connect with Janet. Her store is on Etsy. And it is Timber Creek Farm on Etsy um, and she she has beautiful beautiful wool that come from her sheeps and that she spins and dyes and it's just wonderful it's really soft so I'm excited about that I love working with wool last year I think I mentioned it last year I learned how to knit socks because that's one of the things that we would need moving forward that's another level of preparedness for me Oh, Michelle said she, the fingerless gloves is something she wants to attempt. I hear you have so much else going on. No kidding. But you'll get to it. It's on your list, right? So eventually you will accomplish that, and it's a goal, right? So once it's on the list, it's a goal. Um, and I'll share my, my uh, pattern with you. <laughs> but um, doing these, these things um, is another level of preparedness, really, is being able to be self-sustainable, to be able to make all the things that you need. And um, it's just amazing when we have guests here, all the things they have to go and purchase um, because they feel they need to have them where that's just not a need for us. And we, we you know, for them, taking the time to make the stuff is kind of senseless in their mind. But for us, it's senseless to go buy it if we can make it. So it's just a mindset. It's just a difference on how you choose to live. But that is something that we really enjoy being able to do is being able to make the things versus purchasing them. So I'm excited to be able to make these and um, not have to worry about trying to find good quality ones anymore because it's just so hard to do sometimes depending what you're shopping for. Um, so anyway, it's just... Knitting is not that difficult. It was something that I thought making socks would be so terribly hard to do when actually it's very simple. So you can learn that at our TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. Um, the doors will be opening soon, so if you haven't gotten on our waiting list, be sure to do that. Um, and at the Treyer Wilderness Academy, you will also have the opportunity to learn in detail all the things that we do here um, on a regular daily basis, all the traditional skills, all the primitive skills, and the skills that we don't know, we have recruited some great people to join us and teach that as well. So you'll find um, Treyer Wilderness Academy is going to be a one-stop shop. So if you're looking to learn these skills and you want to step out of that comfort zone that you're in, join me there, and we would be absolutely thrilled to teach you. Plus, you can find a lot of information on TreyerWilderness.com as well as on our YouTube channel, which you can go to by simply going to TreyerWilderness.com slash YouTube. So, 
Does anybody have any questions or anything they want to share today? What are you grateful for? Um, what does preparedness mean to you? I would love to hear you, you know, your your thoughts on that. And if you're watching this after the fact, please share that below. Uh, just your feedback is really priceless. It helps me to gauge what um, I need to teach on. And also, it's just um, great to hear what you guys are grateful for. Like I said, Daniel, earlier, Daniel, um, I mentioned his name because he has just been leaving some really uh, amazing things that he's grateful for. And like I said, I, I get stuck having to share just one because there's just so many in my life and so many things that I am just so forever grateful for. Um, Chad just asked if the Academy is online or in person. Right now it's online. Um, we are considering doing um, some in-person things possibly in the future, um, both in giving people the opportunity to uh, take a couple days and see what off-grid living is like and also um, having classes. So there's lots of thoughts going on. So, But right now the classes that are available at the Academy are online, but very detailed. Good question. Thank you. Well, guys, I've taken up enough of your time today, and I will do my best to be um, on time tomorrow at noon and not have any struggles. But thank you for bearing with me. It's just been very chaotic and um, rather interesting here. But I'm glad I got to spend time with you today, and I wish you guys a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless. <music>